So right now we don't have a, a definitive biomarker for Lewy body dementia. We do know that the uh, clinical syndrome, particularly as laid out by the uh, DLB consortium, are pretty accurate in identifying individuals who are likely to have Lewy body pathology at mm -hmm. autopsy. Uh, what we're finding though is a lot of people who, especially those who have Alzheimer's and Lewy bodies together, frequently do not fulfill the full diagnost clinical diagnostic criteria. So uh, because of this issue, the NIH has funded a number of studies, including one that, that we're a part of, the Dementia with Lewy Body Consortium based here in the U.S., and there's efforts in uh, Europe and Japan as well, to start to look at whether blood, spinal fluid, imaging, uh, biomarkers can help us better identify those who truly have Lewy body dementia and those who have maybe Alzheimer's or some other kind of dementing disorder. We know generally speaking that people with dementia with Lewy bodies and Parkinson's dementia as well, which both fit under that umbrella of Lewy body dementia, uh, that we tend to see less atrophy in the brain on MRI. It's not very specific, but when you see somebody with um, sort of the classic Lewy body dementia symptoms, Parkinsonism, hallucinations, uh, that um, it, and, la and not much atrophy like you would expect to see in Alzheimer's is one of those things that kind of clicks in my head and says uh, maybe I should be thinking about Lewy body dementia here. Um, the dopamine transporter scan can be helpful although um, there are some patients especially in the dementia with Lewy bodies where dementia precedes the Parkinsonism. Uh, many of those individuals maybe 15-20% will have a normal dopamine scan, at least initially. One of the studies we're involved in is looking at does that change over time? Do those people become DAT scan abnormal over time? There are a number of efforts. Some of them are imaging, uh, looking at the frequency, as I mentioned, of the dopamine scans, uh, looking at amyloid scans, the um, MRIs and volumetric measurements. Our group here is focused on also looking at blood and spinal fluid indicators, particularly spinal fluid, and we do tend to see some differences that have been described by others as well, that the, the amyloid changes that we see in the spinal fluid look somewhat like Alzheimer's disease, but we don't see that elevated um, phosphotau that is typically described. And we, the, the alpha-synuclein measurements are not quite ready for prime time, but uh, we are seeing that there is maybe some signals there that we can combine with the Alzheimer markers to give us a better idea.